Welcome to Cars Retro Reviews. Now, I know what you're thinking. It's a little bit, uh, a little bit racy. But let me tell you, the only thing I'm wearing is a smile. That in a huge erection. <laughs> Man, I fucking love you. I have fond memories of you as a child, and like someone who died from autoerotic asphyxiation, you hold up today even as I'm playing you now. <laughs> ah, that's dreadful. I mean, okay, maybe you like the graphical pizzazz, if that's even a fucking word, that modern games have, but you have something they don't. I'm not sure what it is, and perhaps it's all the retrogasms I'm having while playing you, but I've had my fair share of bad games, and you most certainly do NOT fit into this category. One of the games I love for the Sega Master System was Black Belt, but you're up there as well. In fact, I would go as far to say that you might even be better. This is certainly not meant to be a love letter of sorts to the past when I was a short, fat, eight-year-old fuck who used to play these games. I still might retain my memories and the short, fat part as well, but I took a step back to justify why I still think this is a rad game. Because looking back, not all the games I used to play were the greatest games, which you'll see in future reviews. I'm gonna spew all the same shit you've probably heard in better reviews, like Wonder Boy has tie-ins with Adventure Island, which ultimately is Wonder Boy and other non-Sega consoles. And that Wonder Boy is really my personal trainer. You know, not terribly bright, but fit as fuck, and he just runs and runs and fucking runs. While I could easily beat him where it counts, <laughs> you know, hot dog eating competition, or m most pee bottles filled in a single sitting, or m most times spent in a single spot without moving, or most porn tabs open in a single browser? As, you know, opposed to what he can do, which is pff, run 26 kilometers in a single breath do 10 times 100 reps of 150 kilo bench presses without sweating and outrun me in a zombie apocalypse although I think we all agree as long as I have a weapon which is not my penis and has an ammunition which is common and can be found anywhere I'll be just fine even if that guy might outlive me after the hordes of zombies are taken care of wait what are we talking about? alright Wonderboy one thing I do remember going back is that this game destroyed one of my controllers how, I hear you ask? The right on my D-pad was fucked. Why is that? Well, take a look at the gameplay for just one second. Where the fuck do you think I'm going to go without the right direction on my D-pad in this game? Imagine a six-week school holiday with nothing else much to do except play video games. I couldn't be the only one who thought this game was pretty fun. They made six sequels, the sixth exclusively for Japan, which will destroy the arse end out of your wallet if you plan on buying it. I said in my last review how Black Belt was taken from the manga and anime series Fist of the North Star, but this time around, this game actually inspired the creation of an anime called Honeybee in Toycom Land. While this seems to be a pretty standard platformer, you have to understand if anyone was going to do platforming these days, it has to be in 3D or some gimmick, and it couldn't just be straight to the point as this game was. You pick it up and just get into it. There's no fucking about, and while it's easy to say the games back then were simpler than what we have these days, in a way that's true. But when you say that, it's similar to your grandparents trying to get a handle of basic technologies, as they look completely bewildered while controlling a mouse and giving this constant confused look as they stare at the screen like it's all something so foreign that you'd think it was written in a completely different language. Games today might have a little more to them, but not that much. And the market has changed. The masses don't want platformers unless they're nothing short of amazing. All they gag for are these fucking brainless first person shooters. As far as platformers go, it doesn't bullshit you by telling you the chick you're trying to bangs in another castle. It doesn't tell you how far you've got, and that can be a good thing on its own merits. It might be hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel and see your progress, but at the same time, you do feel like there's some kind of progression happening. It's sphincter-tightening gameplay that makes you second-guess every 
fucking jump on top of kind of forcing you to run at full pace at whatever comes your way. So expect a few attempts at every level. The controls are tighter than a virgin's asshole, and just like that virgin's asshole, you're gonna have fun from start to finish. Although I assume there's fun at the end, as I get like four or five levels in and I simply just can't finish you. I just run out of lives and I'm forced to start again like some thug in jail who thinks he's found God in his spaghetti or some shit. It's made by a small company called Sega, who released a few games here and there but were more memorable as a clown college and that Swedish polka metal trip hop band who carefully infuse all the flavours but never really being any good at any of those genres specifically. I can make a recommendation of people who own their Sega Master System still that you should either hold onto this cart or buy it if you don't already own it. Watch for upcoming reviews as I find a few other gems for this console that I thought I'd either lost or don't even really remember owning it in the first place. As always, thank you very much for watching. Click on the TV to see the last review and click on the name underneath the television if you'd like to subscribe.